So we've gone back to this old DVD player that's been sitting there gathering dust since just about when I started teaching film studies in the evenings here. So without further ado, here's Harry. He's going to talk about the film. Some of you have seen it, some of you haven't. It's screening tonight as part of the African Film Festival at the Cambridge Arts Picture House. So if you want to catch it, the full version, half past six, I'll be there tonight. Um, Harry has a beautiful programme lined up for us which he's not able to use, so we're winging it. <coughs> yeah. I just downloaded some clips, but unfortunately we can't play them, so we're going to have to kind of jump through the DVD and hopefully be able to play a couple of clips. Um, I hope you have lots of questions. But I, I think I'll, I'll start just about saying how, what I've done and how I got involved in it. So this was a film I made over six years for BBC and Public Broadcasting Service in America. Um, it was filmed in Tanzania. Um, and I, I, I've sort of travelled and worked in 17 African countries. But how I got involved in this particular subject does everyone know what the film's about? Yeah. Yeah. How many of you came to the screening of the Cambridge Film Festival play? Loads of people. So you've heard me talk before. So, um, I don't know what the film is about. You don't know what it's about? Okay, well, thank you. <laughs> Good. Um, so I, I first came aware of this subject in 2004. I was making a film in, in Senegal um, about a completely different subject for the, for the British Council. Uh, I was filming on the street and a mother approached me with her albino child, held the child out to me and said take it back to where it comes from, assuming because I was white skinned that the, the child belonged to me in some way. Um, I have a, a cousin who has albinism so I understood the condition, um, but it ne I'd never met anyone with albinism in Africa before and I I'd never realised how people could be so discriminated against for the, for the colour of their skin in, in Africa and for having albinism. Um, so I came back to England and I spoke to people and realised how little everyone knew about the subject and began to think about how film could help raise awareness and hopefully encourage charities to get involved and help these people. Um, so I, it was actually a year later I was making a film in Sierra Leone and I met a mother with albinism and her four albino children living on the streets of the capital, Freetown. And that's when I first had a conversation with someone and realised that this wasn't just a problem in Senegal, but it was all over the continent. Um, so I started to, at that point to look where I could make a film um, and I found a num number of key issues. I found a farm in Senegal where about 30 people with albinism had fled to because they were being so badly treated in their community. I found that women with albinism in South Africa were being raped in the belief that it cures HIV. And then I found Ukulewe Island, which is the island where I ended up focusing the film, which has an unusually large number of albinos on this island. And what they believe is they were dumped there a long time ago and the population's grown and now they've formed an albino society where they can look out for each other and share their experiences. Um, and this is where I travelled, kind of blind about the subject, I knew very little about it. I, I first travelled there in 2006. Um, and what I didn't know at the time was there was about to be a, an outbreak of murders that, that were targeting albino people in Tanzania and, and other parts of Africa. Um, so really I got involved in it for the stories of discrimination I was hearing. People were being treated like animals really. They were being, and what I found on the island, people were kept away from the family in separate rooms, uh, often in the dark. They were made to eat from a separate plate and drink from a separate cup from their brothers and sisters. Uh, they knew very little about skin cancer. So all albinism is, uh, they're not a curse or they're not a ghost, as some people think in Africa. It's just a lack of melanin in your skin that produces pigment, that's all it is. And it can also affect the eyes, so you can be visually impaired. Um, so this is what I discovered when I first went out there. But what I had no idea at that point what was about to happen over the next um, five years. That, that it would lead to the murder of 75 people with albinism. And 34 people would be left mutilated. Um, but still survive. Um, so which... This is really responsible. Witch doctors in Tanzania began spreading the rumours that albino body parts can make you rich or help you win an election or bring gold to the top surface of your mind. Um, so I knew this was, when I started out, I knew this was a very sad subject, but I wanted to try and find two very inspiring characters to tell the story. And one of the people I found was, was a man called Joseph Atorna, who is an albino man himself. 
Um, and as the murders began to escalate in Tanzania, he very bravely set out from his home, leaving his wife and kids, set out around the country to confront the, the communities where the murders had taken place. So uh, the first clip I'm going to show you is, is of Joseph Vass going into the communities and very bravely challenging uh, the people who believe that his body parts will make them rich. Uh, something that happened when the murders first escalated is obviously people were very scared and the government panicked really and started to um, throw young Abuna children into special camps around the country which there are now nine of in Tanzania. Some of these camps have as many as 180 Abuna children um, they're guarded by police at night, they're surrounded by high walls and the children really don't know why they're there. Some of these kids are as young as two years old and really psychologically affected by what's happened to them. And, and what we found is that, that a lot of parents, because these camps were set up, uh, they didn't want the responsibility of something happening to their child. And also a lot of parents were found responsible for what was happening to them. Um, so they also started dumping their children in these camps. And I'm going to just go straight into another clip that shows you one of these camps and, and, and the conditions. Okay, um, so that's Burangija, that's one of the camps um, that I'm talking about. But there are now lots of these all around the country. Um, and the conditions are very bad, and of course this is no way that children should grow up. They should be allowed to be in mixed schools with other kids. Um, so, it was always my dream for this film uh, to screen it in Tanzania and try and use it for educational purposes. Um, that's, that's the target and that's about to come true. But the, the first thing um, I realised it was very important to do was to play the film around the world, to build the global power behind the film, um, and to build a global audience. So when we come to launch it in Tanzania, it's a much more powerful lobbying tool against the government. So, that, so, so we've no, now done that. It's now played in over 50 festivals in 42 countries. Uh, Joseph has come to a lot of those screenings. So he's come to New York and Canada and Australia and uh, Poland and Amsterdam and Finland. Unfortunately, he hasn't been able to come to all of them. We were hoping tonight he would be here, but he couldn't get his visa to come to Cambridge. I'm come to England, unfortunately. Um, so we really feel like we're now, we've built a sort of global power behind the film, governments are getting behind us, and now we're finally about to launch the film in Tanzania in January, and we have the Prime Minister of Tanzania um, launching the film for us, um, and we have the UK and US government paying for the event, and lots of other governments in the capital are going to be coming, and so we're very excited about that. And then after that, process, we then begin launching the film around Tanzania, so we're taking the film into very remote regions of Tanzania, where the killings have been most prominent. Um, Joseph Fat will be accompanying the film, he'll be talking after the screenings and engaging with communities. We also have a team of dermatologists, skin specialists, who will be giving out information in Swahili to the communities to educate them about the basic science of albinism. We'll be distributing free sun cream as well. We also have a witch doctor uh, involved who's going to, so these are the people who have been held largely responsible for these, these beliefs that are spreading around the country. We've got a well respected witch doctor involved so he can publicly stand up and condemn the beliefs in front of the communities. We also have a religious leader because they play a very important role in, in remote communities so he will also condemn the beliefs. So we're really excited about that tool. But that leads me kind of into my other clip, and I'm just going to play a quick clip of Joseph Fat meeting a witch doctor, coming face to face with the people who are held responsible. We probably haven't got that long, so this might be. We, um, myself and Joseph Fat, have now established a charity um, called Standing Voice. So we were getting such an amazing reaction from audiences and people who had seen it on the BBC, and it's now been broadcast in 10 countries across the world in Australia. Um, and the response has just been amazing. Um, so we've established the charity uh, that's involved in funding the filter tour around Tanzania. We're also now, um, we've just given a major grant to a, a cancer okay. clinic in Tanzania where we have a manufacturing plant now. We're uh, producing sunscreen with local ingredients at this, this plant in, near Kilimanjaro. And that's going to be free for all people with animals. So we're helping to dis distribute, distribute that. We're also um, doing regular screenings. With, we're sending dermatologists to all the camps and they screen the children to make sure they can identify any cancerous wounds early so they can catch them in time. Um, we're also just renovating the school, the school that you saw, um, the camp that you saw 
the clip of. Um, so far, we've um, we found that the schools were very run down. So the first thing we wanted to do was try and lift morale. We've been training the matrons so they can look after the kids. Because often you find kids just sitting out in the sun with, with blistered heads and, and crying. Um, so we've been training the matrons about how to look after them properly. Um, we've fixed broken windows and broken doors. We're sending a team of local East African artists to go and paint the orioles on the schools, uh, on the walls. And they're going to work with the kids to come up with ideas of how to do that. Um, we're also building a, a training workshop on the island. Um, we've so far given out 22 business grants to the Ukure Arab you know, Society members, so they've had to um, put in proposals for what they want to do. That might be um, produce, making pots locally that they can take down to market or running a small stool. Some people have orange trees. There's lots of really great ideas. So we've given out uh, business grants to 22 members so far. We have lots of other applications on there. And then we're, we've so far bought them a plot of land with a, a meeting hall where they can come and meet and they can come and uh, store their sunscreen there and people can come and get information about skin cancer. But the, it's also going to be a training centre and a workshop where they can come and uh, run their businesses from, from the um, centre. Uh, what else have we done? We've done lo lots of other things, but there's a, there's a website and there's some information here that you can take away if you're interested in and learn a bit more about it. We also have a, a Facebook page. So the charity is called Standing Voice uh, and the website is standingvoice.org. There's lots of ways um, people can put on their own fundraising events or make, do a screening of the film to try and, try and raise some funds and, and really just get people better educated about what's going on in Tanzania. So maybe you can collect that at the end. But I think we'll just quickly... Uh, it was sticking again. So How was it? <coughs> we might be able to... <laughs> do you want a last clip? Yeah, I mean... I don't think we're going to get the witch stop. Alright, well, let's go and keep going. That's the stop.